Hello everybody and welcome back to the Weeb Family Basement. We are the Weeb Family. We're a lot like your family in that dad mansplains everything. He does. Everything. What, what's that position? <laughs> yeah, I got, yeah. I got, I got to you get can't some, see it because your, your legs are I need gone. to get some good shots for 28th Prototype on Instagram. He likes to freeze frame me. He does. For the memes. For memes. Where, memes. where it makes for it look like I'm mansplaining to you. Or I um, have, you're or, not? Or I have that dumbfounded look on my face like. That is the normal yeah. look. The normal look. <clears throat> anyway. Word. Why can't you freeze frame me like. <laughs> That's the what. The what. The samurai cop. Yeah. Anyway. Welcome to the Weeb Family channel. We are the Weeb Family. Welcome to our monthly haul video. If this is your first time here. Please watch our other stuff. Not just the hauls. This yes. The watch one. more than the hauls. We do way more than the hauls. Also be sure to like subscribe and share. share we need more subs we gotta let the world know about our dumb opinions so share um and another thing that we do that maybe not a lot of other manga tube channels do is we talk while we haul so not only are we going to show you all the stuff that we bought this month we're going to tell you some good stories about them it's going to be entertaining but this is going to be a long video we're a long format what are, what are we starting to call ourselves a video, a video podcast. podcast we're a video podcast this isn't something you uh, watch while you're taking a shit on the toilet. This is what you have on while you're trying to get something else done. Yeah, yeah like you yeah. know, you're it's trying more to, like a podcast. Or yeah, something. you're trying to like clean your room, so you put it on, and just every now and then you look when something. What's the cover of that face. thing that they're talking about? Mm -hmm. Let me go. Yeah, at exactly. It. But if you're one of those people, you're taking a shit and you're in a hurry, look in the timestamps. You can jump straight to uh, a still shot with all the books. But I will say there's bonus content if you watch the whole thing. There's a few books that we picked up just before recording this that aren't in the still shot. So you get some extra content if you stay through. And as a super added bonus, we're going to talk about a K-drama at the very end of the video. Oh. So either fast forward or, you know, what? watch till the end. So Watch till the end. So there you go. With that said... Don't be one of them cringe YouTubers, Mom. So with that said, what? you might be wondering why Sounds we have our four-legged family member here. Andy. Well, what's he his doesn't full look name? very happy. His full name is Commander Cowboy Andy. No, it's Andy Pants. No, it's Commander Andy Cowboy Pants. Andy. Andy Pants. Andy Pants. So there's a reason why we have uh, Andy here on the channel. is because we need to discuss, before we can get to the hall, we got to talk about... We need about, to shame our cat. Stop being... <laughs> We gotta unhaul before you, you gotta unhaul before you can haul. <sighs> no, we already had this discussion, and daughter's kind of triggered by what we're about to say. Oh, the books really? are not ruined. So, what we discover now, eagle eyed viewers, long time eagle eyed viewers, will notice that our shelf is a little bit different, right? Like, there's no longer some shelves right here where we have some like random stuff. Um, that is this, not from getting books. This is not, not from, from getting, getting books. books. What you we would think. What we discovered not. is that our four-legged family member Andy had a, a serious, uh, a suspicious, a very sussy, <laughs> sussy amount, amount of uh, peas. Okay, let him go. He had a suspicious uh, lack of peas in his litter box. Yeah, like no peas at all. Yeah, for like a good week or two. So we're like, so what's we going on So we thought he here? was afraid of fireworks because it was well, during like 4th of yeah, July. Yeah, it was during the 4th of July week. We also switched his cat food. So we thought he was angry. Yeah, so like he only likes this one particular kitten food. He's like a child. He sucks. And the, the store was out Takes of it. Takes after someone. Shut up. Anyway, Uh-oh, Binky. Bongo's vinted. They... We're out of his normal kitten food that he will only eat. So we had to get him regular cat food. And I think he was very upset about it. He was. He was so mad. there were no peas in his litter box. <laughs> so we got a black light and we started shining it around. And we noticed that there were some pea stains on one of our bottom shelves. And That's some of our sus. books was ruined. Now, I'm actually going to try and do some editing for this video. And in some of these corners... I'm going to put some black light, some cool black light photos of our manga that I did for Instagram, which you should be following both of us at Mead the Weed Family underscore mom and or dad if you want um, in the description. But you get to see some extra cool content over there, um, including some of these cool black light photos. Um, so it's going to make me start crying. 
Yes. So Cause, we because the none none of Dad's books, none of Dad's books, all yeah, my books. They were all mommy's books. It's very sad. But here are some books that got ruined, which Daughter <laughs> Weave takes issue with calling them ruined. They're not ruined. Like you can barely even see the pea stain. So we got Kare First Love Volume One and Volume Two. This probably won't show up here, but basically the pea was at the bottom and it kind of soaked up into these bottom corners. They're barely I'm going to put in some black light photos so that the viewers can see. It's still real. And it's the psychological thing. No one wants to be reading e-books. Here's the other thing. Here's the other thing. You may not see it. You may not smell it. The cat can still smell it. You can keep it somewhere else where he can't pee on it. (sighs) Anyway, we decided what we did was we elevated the shelf and rearranged some things. But Kari first saw volumes one and two were ruined. Most of Orin High School Host Club. What? Oh my gosh. How did we get to it? We're doing. We got... Yeah, these are on all. So this is high school debut. Volumes one through nine got ruined. Yeah. All right, that this... sucks. Is this your call out post on your Twitter.com against our cat? I don't know what call out posting is. We're not. Call out posting! We're not 10, okay? Call out posting is when you call someone out for doing something yeah. bad. Yeah, anyway, you got Oren High Host Club. One through one nine. Through nine. And, Both one through nine. And ten through seventeen. The only one that didn't get peed on was volume eighteen. And I'm ninety nine percent sure it was because I got it after, after he did he, it. He did it so. Because for some reason I didn't have 18 and I suddenly discovered, wait, I don't yes. have 18. So these are all books that got ruined. We got an unhaul. And I think the saddest portion of this, as I try to make space on this table, is that obviously we had all the individual Tonko Bonds. But look at this. Look at this. The border sticker. Now I some people back in the day. Some people will get mad about these companies putting stickers on their books. And I would have been, I was mad back in the day when they did this. But now it's like, I was there. I didn't get this off of right stuff. I got it. Well, whatever. You know what I mean. That we got this <laughs> at Borders when they were cool and still in business. And you could print off 40 off coupons and go buy a get book. Two for two yeah. people. It's still so. usable. They're still readable. I don't know why you're getting rid Look, of Look, do you want do you want a full set of Oran High Post Club with Cat P? <sighs> I, I just... See, see, don't, yes. see, I just see. don't see why. I mean, okay, I get that you don't want the cat to pee on them again. But no, 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 That's what you're saying. They're still readable. Yes. Do you want them? Like, you can have, you can have your own set of Oran High Host Club that you can take with you when you leave the house. But the problem is you're just going to get another one, so it's still wasteful. Like, if you're not going to, if you get another set, then it's like, okay, but I know you guys are going to, so then it's like. You're just adding to the wastefulness. Because it's still readable! Anyway, you can have the cap ebooks. Or if someone else wants the cap ebooks, <laughs> they can message us and maybe we can work something out. But anyway, you got to do the unhaul before you can do the haul. So put, put click here for haul begins here. Because so, unhaul we. Yes. So with that said, where, where should we start, Mommy Weave? Do you, do you want to start on your side, my side? Uh, also, tell us how you like this format with both of us on camera trying something he was new. insistent well there's so many times your reactions are behind the camera and no one can see you face palm me and uh, <laughs> this might be a better format you know for a know. Uh, two-person thing it's a little sus, well if though. it absolutely sucks and you hate seeing my ugly face then <laughs> let us know in the comments it's below. just kind of sus you randomly changing it like that yes like, anyway we, we we've should... randomly <laughs> changed stuff before yes like so. like locations of certain manga you shouldn't have said that. Now it's too obvious. Anyway. Anyway. So I, I guess we'll start here. And here is something that... It's one of those... Dad is constantly being like, Hey, do you like this? Do you want to get it? And Because I'm an enabler. Yes. Lighting. That is the best word. Because you ask me, do I want to read that? More than likely, the answer is yes. And I have to stop myself because he'll just be like, All right, throw it on the stack. So, we threw on the stack, My Dress Up Darling, number one. You which, seriously got that? It's, it's actually really cute. Sus. It's actually super cute. So, you have this guy who loves making um, Hina dolls, and his grandpa makes Hina dolls. And that is his obsession. Like, we're, we are weebs. He is a weeb for Hina dolls. That's all he does. And then one day, he's at school because his sewing machine is broken, and he wants to 
keep working on his Hina dolls, that this gal shows up, finds out that he's sewing things. He thinks he's going to be made fun of because, oh, ha ha, you're a boy, you like dolls. She was like, no, that's freaking awesome. That's so freaking cool. I love that you can make uh, clothing. Oh, by the way, I was trying to make a cosplay of my favorite uh, video game character. Would you help me make this cosplay of this video game character? And he is so impressed with her, um, like, dedication to this video game character and the this popular cute girl basically being like, I don't care that you like Hina dolls. Hina dolls are cool. It's cool that you like Hina dolls. So that moved him to be like, I'll do it. I'll help you with your uh, cosplay. And he makes a cosplay for her, which is in My Dress Up Darling 2. So that's the who she cosplays in that one. And then because I like it and he, Daddy Weave is an enabler, he got me two more, which were My Dress Up Darling 3 and My Dress Up Darling 4. And each she's cosplaying in each of these covers. That's how they relate to the thing. And yes, I've read them all because they're fast and they were fun. Yeah. So. Actually, we read... Never mind. I was going to say we read most of the stuff in the hall, but... As I look at the no, slides, no. I'm like, no no, 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 no. But I read a lot this month. You did. Because, like, uh, for various reasons, I couldn't paint, which is another thing I do in the evening time, mm. painting miniatures. Um, but I actually read a ton this month. Yeah, well. Um, but some of it's not in the hall. Some of it's yeah, other stuff. So, so, recommended hall. Yeah. Pass it down that way, yeah. Though, speaking of things we haven't read. Yeah. <laughs> the next few it's are a... future reads. Kagaguri. Kakeguri. 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 Is one of the most unpronounceable titles to the English language. So we have eight. Yeah. Oh, these are not even in the right order. Yes, they are. No. Because... Yes, they are. No. Oh, that's never mind. Twelve. Yes, it's weird because it jumps. Like I was waiting on volume eight to be uh, restocked, and it finally was. So twelve. Yeah. 13. And these are two of the bonus ones that you won't see bonus. if you just jump to the end. And then what was throwing me off is you have Kagaguri twin. twin 10. Yes, which is the prequel series. The prequel series. Yeah. So. Which you haven't read any of that. Actually, I have. I've read about three volumes of this. Well, you... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So, boom. What's next? What news? Oh, here we go. No, this is an interesting one. Hey, go ahead and show, show, and I can we have Zom 100, Volume 1, and Zom 100, Volume 2. Now, I was slow to pick this one up because I'm going to keep it real. Well, who does that remind you of on the cover of Volume 1? Ah, uh, let me see it. This is going to go way back. Daughter Wee um, won't get it, but Mommy Wee might. I... Doesn't it look like Jughead from Archie? With that crown. I, mean, I and guess. All that. I okay, didn't think that of that at all, but really, I can see it. I it, can see it. It reminded me of Jughead, and Archie is terrible. So, like, for <laughs> I the see longest how you time. It, though. I mean. So, for the longest time, I didn't want to get this. And here's the truth. Generally speaking, I don't like zombie stories. Generally speaking, like, I mean, there's some exceptions, like Walking Dead, the original uh, uh, Dawn of the Living Dead. Um,. But generally, I didn't like it. So when this was supposed to be like a zombie comedy, like Shaun of the Dead, I was like, I don't know. This sounds dumb. But I finally picked it up because I bowed to peer pressure, which we'll talk more about here <laughs> shortly. But um, I finally got it, and I read it. It is beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. First of all, the art is gorgeous. I really like the style of the um, very rounded faces. There's some boobies in it, so you already know I'm going to be a I fan say, That's there. the first thing I flipped to when I opened it up. <laughs> I saw that's why I mentioned it. <laughs> and titties. But, like, kind of what it starts off with is, like, it's this guy who works at these, uh, at one of these stereotypical Japanese companies where you're just expected to work 12 hours a day, seven days a week, blah, blah, blah. So he hasn't had, like, a day off in three years. And... When the zombie apocalypse happens, he's happy because he can finally take a day off. And, like, this breath of freshness, like, in his life is just so good to read. And as a working stiff myself, like, I'm just like, oh, I relate to this so I was hard. Like, you, the average worker, this is their, like, yeah, party song or whatever. Basically, yeah. 
And, like, it's just all of his adventures. He literally makes a bucket list of all the things that he's always wanted to do. And, look, some of them are dumb. One of them is, like, I'm going to uh, wine and dine a waitress. Or a, uh, what, what the steward? Stewardess, like, from an airplane. Oh, he just wants flight to find any, any flight attendant, stewardess, whatever. Yeah, and he wants to wine and dine them, right? Like, he... Any, so, wait, wait, okay. Yeah. Fine, that's interesting. Um, Money? What do you mean, money? Like, if he has to wine and diner, he has to have money. So how does that work? Well, he's got to have a restaurant to take him to. And they all discuss the logistics of it. Um, I see. It's not just, oh, it's a day off. And let me just dodge the zombies while I go to Bennigan's. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. How is he doing this? It's not like that. Well, that's why you got to read it. Okay, okay, okay. It's actually super good. This is on my list to read. It's low, but it's on my list to read. It was actually surprisingly good. And I appreciate... Uh, Marguerite's manga, I think, is the one, and mainly manga on Instagram, that finally got me to take the dive, and I enjoyed it. So, there we go. And now we can shame me. This is what I roll my eyes at. Because, oh, yes. we... no, no, because, okay, first of all, we have Helsing Deluxe. Deluxe. The hardcover edition. Hardcover. The sauce one. edition. Yeah, volume one. Volume two. Yeah. Is that volume three or four? Volume three. Well, it's the last one. I see. So this is this is done in three, which represents ten actual so, volumes. What I have to say about this is that it turns out you liked it. Yeah. But the problem I have is that mm. you don't like vampires. Like I don't. you like vampires less less than you like zombies. Probably. Wait. Let me ask you this. So I can get you even more fired up on camera. Mm. What do I like even less than zombies and vampires? I'll give you a hint. It begins with an N. Yeah. Mm. I can't. I don't know. Nazis. Oh. <laughs> I hate not. not well, like, every, everybody should hate Nazis. Well, hold on. Not like an Indiana Jones. You don't like Nazis. Nazis as a story. Trip. Yes. Because like, let me tell you something. There's not a day in my life that goes by that I don't hear someone say Hitler. And like, really? if you want, yes. Too and, much internet. Too much yeah. internet. And oh. If, and if like, you need the, if you're the laziest writer ever and you want to make your story good, like you can just cheat and have the bad guys as Nazis. And they're so overplayed and all this, right? I, yes. Okay. So, so, okay. We have story with Nazis mm-hmm. and vampires. And, and you're zo- like. And what? And zombies. And apparently and zombies. Yeah. But I gotta get it. I yep. gotta get it. Yep. Because it's hardbound. Like, I just... Okay. Uh, sauce. Sauce. Hold on, sauce, hold on. Hold on. Sauce, Let me mansplain sauce. something to you. Sauce! <laughs> no, like, I'm actually going to agree. Bongo's minted. Can you please stop saying stuff <laughs> no one understands? Not even us. <laughs> I don't understand. Look. Ten years ago, I probably would have hated this book. I'm going to be upfront with that. And if I would have had the full description of it... I probably would have been like, I'm going to pass because it's vampires, Nazis, and zombies. Which you only knew it was vampires. I only knew it was vampires initially. But what got me to go to do it is one of these was unwrapped at my local bookstore. So I had the chance to flip through it. So you saw boobs? No, there are no boobs in this. So, but like. That's a strike against it. Yeah, kind of. It'd be better with some boobs. But like, I'm flipping through it and I'm like, first of all, these printings are like absolutely gorgeous. But, like, I'm looking at some of the art, and I'm just like, wow, this is, like, classic anime style. It does style. have nice detail. Yeah. And like, everything looks so good. And what was it? I'm trying to find the actual that page. That actually makes me think a little bit of uh, Gunsmith Cats. Yeah, maybe a little. But it's from that same time period. Yeah. Um, I can't find the page that I saw that I was just like, okay, I like what's going on on this page so much that um, I want to buy it. Um, whatever, this is a terrible Yeah, you should video. probably mark that next time. So anyway, um, I gave it a try. Got it on for about half off uh, on Amazon, I think. Like a flash sale or something. And I actually really enjoyed it. And I was like, okay, this isn't Shakespeare. It's not super deep or whatever. But I want to go ahead and get the rest of it. And I did. Mommy of Mommy Weeb was upset about it for a day or two, but here we are. I think she's still upset about it. I'm not upset about it because you ended up liking it. Yes. I would have been upset if you didn't end up liking it. Yes, but it had a lot of strikes going against it, so I understand your reservation. Yes. Yeah. Three. So, yeah. Helsing by Coda Hirano. 
Good stuff. Good stuff. But speaking of hardbacks. Yeah, that seems to be the thing nowadays. Yes. So we have Finland Saga 4, Finland Saga 5, and 6, and 7, and 8. And some of these covers are pretty cool. Yeah, and keep going. Keep going. Nine. And ten. Dude, that guy looks sussy baka. He looks pretty cool. I can tell you that's a villain right now. I know nothing about yeah. the story, but that's a villain pose yeah. right there. Yeah. And eleven, which is the Actually most it reminds recent. me of Magatsu from Blade of the Immortal. Actually, yeah, that would yeah. be a not necessarily a villain. That would yeah. be like a anti hero. Anti -hero. Yeah. So, so eleven, so the most soft. recent. I have not had a chance to continue on reading this. I'm still on three. Yes. But what we need to do is, instead of you talking about the book, we need to talk about the Vinland Saga Saga. Yeah. Which I think is an interesting story. And Daughter can just tune out. <laughs> that she has been this whole time. So, yeah, I am listening. So, I went to the store the other day to find Volume 4, because that was the next one mommy needed i think one of the main reasons why i was trying to get aggressive with these is because at the beginning of the month uh bar or books a million had their buy two get one free and buying these would maximize the savings yeah um so it's going to sound weird that i was at uh barnes and noble but whatever he was looking all over for yeah me. i was trying to find volume four and uh to kind of come backfill some of the stuff that i bought at books a million that's kind of how it relates but anyway, I went to a Barnes & Noble, and the strangest thing happened. I went to their website, and I checked on the the two Barnes & Nobles that are closest to our house. Because we're spoiled. We have like four different bookstores within driving distance. Not that far, us. yeah. Um, and um, the, the two closest to our house said that they had Volume 4 in stock, right? Along with a bunch of other ones. I go to the one the closest to our house... And not only was Vinland Saga number four not there, like someone had bought it between the times I had checked in, but like no Vinland Saga was on the shelf, mm -hmm. which was puzzling because I was like, how there's you, always like a random volume or two. This how like, do you have none on the shelf? Yeah. Especially when you go online and it says that they're there. Exactly. So then I was like, I think I was on a lunch break. So I was like, cause it was like a work from home day. I was like, oh, I, I'm just going to go to the other store and see what the situation is there. Extra long lunch. I go there, and they're all completely gone, too. Now, I'm not saying it was aliens, but aliens. Aliens. <laughs> like, there were nowhere to be found, and I, I had asked the lady, because... Hey, was it, do you think the Bongo's Binted aliens stole them? Oh, my God, stop talking about Bongo's Binted. No one gets that. <laughs> Nobody. Not even us. Photos printed, Bongo's Binted. Anyway, uh, I asked the lady at the counter, because I was like, I'm already here. I'm already going Might over my well list. Ask. Yeah. And they were able to find um, one of them. I think it was volume seven, but not the volume four. And even yeah. she was puzzled that, like, there were none. Because her, sto her stock was saying that Yeah, they were that there. they had tons of them. So I had no idea where they went. Since then, both stores have had them back on their shelves. So I don't know what the hell happened. It was just a weird... Glitchy, yeah. glitch in the matrix. Glitch in the matrix. Pretty, yeah. pretty, uh, pretty. Sus. There's all them Vinland sagas. Yeah. Moving on. So now, is them all over? I guess I don't know. I don't know. So now we have volume two of Love and Heart, which I've already read. Um, it is stalkery goodness, I guess you might say. It is, if you've read volume one you'll know that he is weird creepy um Reset. i don't i don't know when i get into it too much because it's got a lot of like if you say too much it'll spoil any of the information um somebody mentioned to me that oh yeah those kind of stories are fun but they're not very rereadable and i hadn't thought about that but that's okay because i'm having fun reading it so very good and now Maybe some explosive uh, content. We have um, Yona of the Dawn 1 and Yona of the Dawn 2. There, there's not going to be any explosion here because, good, spoiler alert, good. this is our video. Like, we're actually recording this on a Saturday. And tomorrow, Sunday, we're going to record our normal bi-weekly video on this. 
So I'm actually not going to say much. I'm saving her for that video. Uh, to yes, we've all the, we've all got it read. Yes. We're all ready to to yes. chat about this, yes. even daughter. Yep. So, but we'll have a video released on this. If all goes well, I'm having this video drop tonight. So within three days, you had to do some special ordering to get these, didn't you? Yeah. Well, uh, volume two was at our local uh, Barnes and Noble, mm -hmm. um, but the volume one I had to order from the BarnesandNoble.com. They oh, distributed. Okay. Um, but yeah, this is like super hot right now. They're just uh, not. At least the lower volumes yeah. are just not in the stores. Right. So. So there you go. It's pretty sus. So within sus. a few days, come back and that's check on sus. our opinion. But when you on want the first volume, that you people the oh yeah, that's I had one today when we were at the store. I was like, well, maybe if the first volume was here, I would get it, but mm -hmm. yeah. it had volume eleven only, and I was like, well, I'm not getting that. Uh, then now we have volume twenty of Yaketate Japan. Japan. J sorry, Japan. Yeah. Japan. Um, Where are you at on reading this? Are you caught up? No, um, I've read up to like volume 15 or 16 where they just competed in the uh, Monaco Cup of bread baking. <laughs> like if you haven't heard us talk about Yakitate Japan before, this is like rated PG version of Food Wars, right? So yeah. it's all about competitive bread making and... That's uh, not competitive bread making. But it's also a gag manga, so there's a lot of stupidity in there. Like when they go to the Monaco Cup, the judge is a uh, clown. A Perot, but like a clown who does like weird magic tricks and stuff. It's, it's like they stole the Food War stole the character design almost for the, uh, oh, the American girl. girl. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway. anyway, I haven't read this yet. I'm looking forward to reading more. And uh, now we have volume one of Shortcake Cake. I have read volume one. Um, Dad kept encouraging me to get this so i was like fine we'll get it and i but i do i liked i like a sign of affection so that's the same creator so i was like okay i like it and i'm not gonna say the name right but there are series before this one i also like that so i was like good stuff well what was it i mean just butcher it so hebe choju okay I, I don't i don't I never heard of it, yeah. so um <clears throat> I like it. It's cute. It's about a girl in a boarding house and boys and stuff. So cute. So we went ahead and we got volume two, volume three, volume four, volume five, and volume six, and volume seven. And I'm probably not going to read this for a while just because I have stacks of other things that I'm going to be reading. Oh, what's this now? I got a funny story about... Another funny story. About shortcake cake. What's <laughs> funny is, over... What was it last summer? I watched an anime called uh, Hinsky. Is it okay to love a pervert as long as she's a cutie? Because we have to keep having these super long names and everything, right? And then, Hins I'm just going to call it Hinsky. In Hinsky, which is a super hilarious rom-com. You should definitely watch it, especially if you like raunchy stuff. It's really, it is, it is funny. And, uh, the, at least the dub version had tons of like slang, slang that blood. was just so funny. So funny. But anyway, in, uh, Hinsky, one of the girls, uh, is a Fujoshi. Am I saying that right? Yeah. I think so. Is a Fujoshi, Fujoshi. She, and she creates her own online BL comic. But her BL comic is called uh, Short and Cake. Mm -hmm. um, and it's based off of the guy and his best friend. And she spies on them and writes BL based on their interactions. But like when we showed this to daughter, she's like, wait, isn't that a BL? Because she was getting it confused with yeah. Short and Cake. Actually, that makes me also think of... Uh... That explanation makes me think of uh, kiss him, not me. Like a you bit, think yeah. that the girl is gonna like the boy, but it's no. I want you two to be together. I want you to be together with your best friend. And it's like that's really weird. So. <laughs> Just like the boy, don't like the boys together. I, I don't know. Short date cake. Then we have uh, volume four of Black Lagoon. Black Lagoon. And volume 10 of Black Lagoon. Yep. So. so obviously these were holes in my collection that I was waiting for restocks on. Yeah. And now that I got them, I can read Black Lagoon. All so right. I'm happy. 
Not much to say about them. Not much to say. This is a um, manga gram buy because I kept seeing it everywhere on there and I was like, I want to get that. So we did. And it's All My Darling Daughters. It just looked like a nice. And because it's a, a one volume thing, that also makes it easier to say, hey, I want to just randomly get that with no really looking into it. So. By the same author as Ooku, mm -hmm. um, which I actually read a few weeks ago. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. I don't know. I, I think I want to read this too, since especially since it's a one shot. Yeah. But Ooku was a kind of a tough read, just because it was written in um, faux old English or whatever. A lot of days and thous mm -hmm. and and uh, doths and all this. So Doth. I, it was a weird. word. Doth. Doth. Yeah, I think it's doth, but it's like does. Thou doth protest too much. Oh, then yeah, that's just does. Then we have volume seven of Sweat and Soap, which is cutie. Have you read it yet? No. Neither one of us have read this. But one. I have a funny story about this oh one. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Lots of funny stories. Yes. So uh, we went and bought this last weekend, and I was actually recognized from YouTube right. in the store. That's right. Now, what I didn't know was that it was also someone who follows me on uh, Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and their screen name is uh, Indie Max or Indie Manga. I think it's Indie Manga X. Um, and they, they, so I knew that we were living in the same city and yeah. everything like that. Um, but it, it was kind of funny that we ran into each other. So. It, but it was cool. He because he came up to me. He's like, "Aren't you the the Weeb family off of YouTube?" And I'm like, "Yes, I am." I didn't. And when that was happening, I didn't even know what was going yeah, on. Yeah, y'all were in the next aisle. Yeah. And because I care about your safety, and I didn't know if this was a weirdo or not, he he ended up being super cool. The, he was a cool guy. I should have been like, "Hey, we should hang out sometime." He was super cool. But like, um. Yeah, I mean, I didn't know if it was a crazy serial stalker or something, so yeah. I, I didn't say, oh, come meet come the family. Come meet the family, yeah. it's all right. But y'all were in the next aisle, yeah. so anyway, yeah. it's a fun story. Definitely need to read this. I'm very excited. Well, because the last volume was a little it sus. Was, oh, it's not sus. It, it was, was sus. slow. It was very it was slow. slow, not sus. Because slow. what what do I, I'm always saying on Instagram, like, you may hate manga like hot gimmick, but at least shit happens in it. And not like the thing happening is, oh, we got to turn in our paperwork to HR. Look, I agree. Like, yeah. that is part mm -hmm. of the reason why um, Incurable Case of Love kind of had a a downer of an ending to me. Because it was more like, let's fill out some documents. Yeah. No one wants okay. to see that. Um, now Ooh. we have Volume 5 of Raw, Raw Hero. Hero. Oh, this is so good. I'm so excited. It's wrapped in plastic. You know it's going to be good. That's awesome. Uh, this is one of my favorite manga. Like maybe it's, it's not when it's in my top ten current manga, but it's towards the uh, the tens. But it can't it can't be super top because you haven't read it and it isn't finished. No, and... no, no. Well, for newer stuff, I'd give that a pass. But I see. Anyway, no, this is like super good. This is it's, more flexible. Yeah, like I don't know. It it's good. I don't want to go into a whole thing. We're yeah, already running super perfect. long. Yeah, it's already like a half an hour long. Cool. Well, every book has a story. Yeah, I guess so. Um, then we have volume 13 of B-Stars. B-Stars. Any comments? I've her? read a little bit of it so far. It's okay. Uh, more it's about, okay? More about Lagoshi's father. I just don't have much to... Not his you, you, don't have any, you don't have any sick burns for your dad? Like, people are expecting you to bring the comedy now. Because <laughs> apparently, oh, apparently you were burning me so hard last time that, like, everyone wants your uh, commentary. I just don't know But you're just she... you're just bringing Bongo's Bento. <laughs> Bongo's Bento. She's entertaining herself. Anyways, yeah. I don't have much to say about it. It's just more about Lagoshi's grandpa, I guess. Okay. Um, the new season came out. I guess you should watch that. What do you think about that new opening for season two? The 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 the, the opening is not as good. Yeah. You had the perfect The song opening. is good though. I like the song no. The song is Look, this okay. that is a daddy daughter thing. I am not It'll never be daughters. as good as And that's called jazz. Dun, 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 yeah. Dun, dun. Not not my thing. Sorry. Then we have volume 9 of Hell's, Hell's Paradise. Paradise. That is you gotta make sure to hold it up. Sorry, there's a lot of comments on how cool this cover is, and I definitely agree with that. I think that's a very cool cover. Reminds yeah. me of Ricky Maru. 
Yeah, actually, yeah. Yeah. I know who things remind me of. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. You're like downing it. Like, let me check. Let me. I had to look at it again. Let me I'm fact sorry. check you real quick. All right. Now we have volume eight of Gal Gohan. Yep. Have you read that one? I have. I have not read this one yet. It was really good. Like, I think you'll like this one because, like, okay, the past maybe two volumes, they've really been pushing the envelope with the relationship appropriateness. Between. Yeah. It, it, if you're if if you're not familiar, I'm going to use an incorrect term and call this an age gap. Which I guess is a correct term. I just don't like the way it's used. Yeah, anyway, it is the correct term. There is yeah, a, a significant a, gap between the characters. Yeah, it's about the, the girl on the cover, Miku Okazaki, who has a crush on her teacher and is trying to get with her. But there's more or less a clear line that the teacher won't go over. And to be fair, in the previous volumes, he hasn't gone over it. But, like, man, are they right on that line. Like... This was more of a let's take a step back from the no, no, line. No, no, there were there was at least one instance where it was over the. But line. not because of him, because of her. It doesn't matter whether who it is. It's still because of her. It should have never gotten to that point. He should have been like, okay, no. Yes. Okay, yes, but like when she barges into him while while he's okay, taking no, a bath. Okay, no, no, yes, like, a barge okay. barging in. You can't do anything about okay, that. that. That's what I'm saying. But the sleeping in the bed. Okay, yeah. He could have okay, stopped that. Okay, yeah, fair. That's fair. So, that's fair. Yeah. Whatever. Well, we take a step back from the inappropriateness, and we have a lot more ground. It's kind of getting back to the classics of the earlier volumes, I think. That, so I think you'll like it. That stack over there is making me anxious. Which one? This one? Yes. Yeah, that is okay. super tall. You're sus. That, Bro, stack that, is sus. Is, that stack is sus. Here, I'm, I'm restacking tall. it. Oh, thank you. Nice. I feel better. Nice. All right, now something I've been waiting on. More Vol bonus material. <laughs> Volume three of Waiting for Spring. Now I can actually start reading it, except it's lower on my list to read because I've got so many other things to read. So, yay. And, and all these younger people are like, boo hoo, first world problems. <laughs> they Sorry. hate you now. Look, don't blame me. Now I blame know. Him. Now I know blame why him. we. Now I know why we uh, get dislikes on our videos because you're all over here like, boo hoo. I'm an adult and can buy manga. No, no, no. I just have too much Look, manga. You know what I'm going to say? Because if I was a kid and had this manga, I would not have this problem because I would have it all read. I have to go to work. I have to yeah. go to work and I don't have time to sit around and read all the manga I want to read all the time. Yeah. That's the difference between adults and kids. That's true. So. Yes. Yes. Yes, and it is a good problem. It's a good problem. To, I'm not saying it's a bad problem. Yeah. It's a good problem to have to have. Check your privilege, of... mommy. Sus. <laughs> I will do that. Okay. All right. Now we have volume six of Chainsaw, Chainsaw Man. Man. Now you got to be like, Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. Come check out Chainsaw Man. That was okay. pretty sus. I guess. <laughs> what is this? Why is she doing that? I think it's like a choker. I don't yeah, but know. Why is it? I haven't read it. I don't know. I was like, is this like a chainsaw thing too? No. Where you're just pulling a chain? I don't think so. Uh, but she's sus. I think she was introduced in the last volume. She's super oh, sus. Oh, look. She's got the ring on her finger right there. Mm -hmm. Yeah, That's, she's sus. I don't know. Okay. I can't say anything without potentially spoiling it. Uh, this is another one of these bonus books that we bought just before coming on air. This doesn't technically get released until next we week. but Went to lunch, then went to the bookstore. Yeah. Uh, I'm looking forward to reading this. Chainsaw Man has been solid. I'm super glad I got on this train before... Um, to try because you don't have to try and find them. Yeah, like yeah. apparently these books are like I see so many people on MangaGram uh, taking photos of their Chainsaw Man collection, and almost all of them are missing like a random volume here or there. Usually a volume one, which just got a huge restock, thankfully. Yeah. But like, well, the, with how popular is, how could mm, they not do it? Viz isn't stupid. Quick, quick side story. Okay. The only reason why I got into this is because our good friend Dane, like. Uh, back when we did our podcast together. Um, was that his thing? Yeah, well, I think he was reading scans, and he was like, oh, dude, you need to check out Chainsaw Man. But he told me this like six months before it actually published yeah, here in the U.S. So I, and this he is was before... He one of those people like I was. Yeah, anyway, but like this was before we got on YouTube and before I got on Instagram, so I didn't know that it was going to be a huge hype, and I looked at it, saw when the first volume was coming out and was just getting it. That looked interesting thing. and yeah. I wanted to get it. Yeah, but luckily I did because like apparently within a few weeks all these sell out. So mm -hmm. anyway, 
Um, so we talked about or unhauling Oran High School Club because it can't be. So we didn't get Oran because it's between printings right now. We're going to get that nice box set to replace it. Which apparently is a fairly good deal if yeah. you can af- if you can afford that chunk of money at all at once. Yeah. you get them for about seven bucks a manga instead of ten. So, mm. but we have another manga by um, Bisco Hatori. Which uh, kind of the reason we got is because we've been talking about Oron so much, and I'm like, yeah, I really like their stuff. Mm. I know I'm not a huge of vampires, but we got Millennium Snow. It's a two in one, and then Millennium Snow. Three and four. Three and four. So. I'm pretty sure this is just four volumes. Yeah, I don't. I think that was. I mean, it. vampire stories are sus, but if it's written by them, it's probably at least decent. That's you know what, what you kind of. You know what? For. You know what the problem with vampires is, and I talked about this on Instagram. Like, if you're talking about straight Dracula, that is a good story, okay? But it's just when you get in. I want to offend some people here. So when you get into Twilight, and yeah. sparkly vampires are more difficult and, to deal and, with. And ten years before that, Anne Rice with their interview with the vampire. Like I understand Dracula was trying to get freak nasty with girls, but it's when they started prettying them up and making them glittery that I'm like, eh. That's I don't kind know. of the Anne Rice was kind of okay because it still had the like we're attacking people vibe. Sure. The the Twilight and I've read. The whole Twilight thing. Sauce. Um, the sparkliness. Like, it's just, it wasn't, it was no. It was yeah. very no. Um, so, yeah, there we are. Millennium Snow. And more replacement volumes. We have Kari First Love 1 and 2. Replacing the ones that got peed on. I, yeah, I I like the, I mean, it's, it's, it's not. You know what I just thought of? What did you just think? Of? If the manga didn't want to get peed on, it should have just moved out of the way. No! <laughs> <laughs> and that's why you have to be on camera for these. <laughs> if she didn't want me peed on, she would have moved out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> Certified Boondocks reference. <laughs> no, no story time here. But one thing that I think is interesting is that. This was a first printing, and this is a second printing. Yeah. And what I think is interesting is noticing the differences between printings. Like, this first edition had this Viz survey in the back. Am I on frame, daughter? Can this be seen? Yeah. Okay, cool. A uh, lot of those older books have Viz surveys. Yeah, I well, I mean, it's kind of cool seeing the difference between printings. And I think this one just says, oh, go to our website and take the survey. Uh, yeah, I think this one has a... Yeah, it's a let us know what you think with the go to our website. Yeah. And then the thing telling you that this is printed backwards. They all, most, even when they have, still have that now. I know, but I was about to say that you, and you still get reviews on Amazon saying, this book is printed backwards. I don't understand why they're printing it backwards. Because if you try to print it the other way, you can read it. Anyway. So, to continue on with replacements. Well, this is half replacement, half not. Yeah. So, okay. First, we have the on US volumes one, two, and three of high school debut, four, five, and six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Then we have thirteen, fourteen, but it also has fifteen, and I didn't even know there was a fifteen. No, you didn't know there was a fourteen and. Oh, a fourteen and a fifteen. So I haven't read this one yet because I need to definitely pull this one out and read this in because they had. Yeah, so there were two Tonko Bonds that got published about a decade after the story, or a decade after it finished publication. The author came back and revisited it, and they did two more volumes, and they were only available in these three-in-one formats, which I must say, these are a good value. Uh, I think I got these off of Right Stuff Anime for about $11 a piece, which is pretty good. They're very thin paper, though. It's more in newspaper... Not... It's a step above newspaper quality. Yeah, It's so. not as good quality as the other ones. But hey, these are in print, so you can get them. And they don't have and cat pee on them. They don't have cat pee on them, and they're cheaper. So, and you get bonus material. Like, it just made sense well, to we get, were get Well, we were getting this one anyways. This yes. one was bought anyways because it had the additional material that I want to read, which is super cute. So, yeah. so there this you is go. another one that I've read the story like two, three times because yep. it's cute. Last stack. Yes. 
Last stack. stack. This was a random purchase. Again, it's easy to make random purchases when it's just one volume because you feel like you're not investing too much. This is She and Her Cat. And Which we've seen like a little OVA thing for this. Yes. Yeah, so the... Actually, do we want to talk about a sappy story? You can tell it. So She and Her Cat by Makoto Shinkai is... It started off as an anime uh, short mm -hmm. on this OVA called Voices of a Distant Star. Well, the short, I think he used it to leverage into doing movies. Yeah, fair enough. Yeah. But they've added it as a bonus material on this DVD. And I really like Voices of a Distant Star. And for those of you who don't know, me and Mommy, we met online in a Yahoo chat room about comic books. It's a very sweet story. Some people Weedy have told romance. me. romance. Yeah, some people have told me. But, um... One of the things that I did when I was a sappy shoujo boy was I sent her this DVD, Voices of a Distant Star, because I'm like, oh, this reminds me so much of well, us. Because he was in Arkansas and I was in Chicago, Chicago. Illinois, yeah. So for the, we were very far apart when we first met. Roughly online. 600 miles for the people that a nine hour there. drive. Yeah. Or so context. it's a nine hour drive, Laura. Oh, it was terrible. It was. I, I can barely be in the car, like, for less than that. So. Anyway, Voices of a Distant Star is about uh, kind of a long-distance relationship, sci-fi in space kind of thing. And it just reminded me of our relationship. And Mommy Wee, being the downer, was like, I don't know. I didn't really like it that much. But she like liked this. she and her cat. Yeah. Um, and then she saw the uh, book by Vertical Comics, which I believe is an imprint of Kodansha, if I recall correctly. Uh, yeah, I think so. And uh, I don't know, she picked it up because she liked that short. And and I looked up more stuff on this. Apparently they made a TV uh, series. Oh, and it. didn't the artist on this also draw Tsubasa? Or, well, I guess their name is What did they draw? Blue Period. Oh, Blue Period. Sorry. Blue Period. Yeah. But yeah, so now I kind of want to even see the, because apparently the way it goes is you have the theatrical short, which spawned the TV adaptation with, that was like a short series, which then spawned, this is actually an adaptation of the TV version. Mm -hmm. So I'd like to see the TV version to see how that has differences between the short versus the manga versus the TV version. So I would be interested in seeing that. Yep. Next, we got some of that wrapped in plastic goodness. Pause. Volume in. 11, Worlds and Aram. Which Sounds I don't have too much else to say. I haven't been able manga to Manga Why the Last Man. Yeah, Manga Why the Last Man. Which apparently is getting a TV show. Not Worlds and Aram, but Why, Why the Last, Last Man. Man. Yeah. yeah. That's kind of... Ooh, let's, let's get this, saucy here for a second. This is volume here, one. Let me, let me just take over this. Yeah, right. you this is volume that. one of... The danger's in my heart. Because I haven't read it. I have no idea why I put this on my buy list. Why, then? I just said <laughs> I have no idea remember. why. I don't remember why. But it's Seven Seas. I, maybe it's because Gal Gohan was from Seven Seas, and I go like that. I was like, okay, maybe these male-oriented rom-coms. Maybe I get, like, I love American Pie. So I thought, like, I don't know. I think that uh, cover also Yeah, was maybe a little bit. Um, so I was like, okay, let me give this a flyer. And then before I read it, like when I posted my story on Instagram, uh, one of the followers, uh, Revy Zero, um, messaged me and she was like, I don't know, bro. Like, <laughs> I don't think you're going to like this. <laughs> and, and I probably should have consulted her first because this was absolute shit. This was garbage. This is bullshit. Like, when we do the patented daddy we think, this is bullshit. <laughs> No, 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 okay. So, and this is this is BS to the point where, like, I wouldn't even like it. So the premise, like, in the first chapter or two, the whole thing is this dude right here, uh, Ichikawa, like, he's a little psycho incel. Like, he wants to murder this girl and, like, literally murder. He's constantly fantasizing about <laughs> stabbing her. daughter. It's about stabbing her and how pretty she would look, like, bleeding Okay, everywhere. okay. But what did you hear about it? I just buy basically the description on the back. Which is what? Uh, Ichikawa, uh, Ichikawa Kyotaro, a boy cl barely clinging to the bottom rung of his social, or, 
Ah, my, I'm bad at reading things out loud. Do you want me to read it out? Yes, you do, because I suck at it. Ichikawa Ko... Kyotaro. Kyotaro, a boy clearly... Now I can't do it. It's hard! A boy barely clinging to the bottom rung of his so- school's social ladder secretly believes he's the tortured lead in some psychological thriller. He spends his days dreaming up ways to disrupt his classmates' peaceful lives and pining after Yamada Ana, the class idol. But Ichikawa's not nearly the troubled teen he pretends to be, and it turns out that Yamada's a bit odd herself. I guess that doesn't sound awful. Yeah, I mean, they, they look, definitely you know churched what? it up. I'm going to say this. You need to be careful when you get seven C's because their descriptions do not match their books. Mm. They you, do you, they do not match it. They do not match it at all. And it clearly, whether it's their uh, ghost ship stuff or their standard stuff, they don't know how to mm. write a summary for their mm. books that clearly tell you what's in them. So yeah, that that's my a, issue with Seven Seas right now. A lot of sus stuff. Yeah. So this was absolute bullshit. And you know what? I'll be honest. Like, if it was about her trying to kill her, at least it would have been interesting because stuff happens. But you know what happens in this book? Oh, she's so pretty. She needs water for her little candy ice cream. You know those, like, Japanese ice cream where you put water in it? It's not actually up. that good. I, whatever. Me <laughs> and daughter have had it. But he's like, let me go get her water because she keeps spilling the cup. Let me uh, draw on the, let me draw tombstones for our culture festival banner. It's bullshit. Like, that, yeah, that doesn't sound very psycho killer. It was stupid. He's, he's not the edgelord that. But they do say I that at know, the end of the description, I guess. I guess. But it just, that description. Oh, and you don't want to know the odd thing about her? Hmm. She just eats a lot. That's what? it. Like she eats a lot of candy. Yeah, sweets, potato, potato chips mostly, but like she just eats a lot. That's, That's her oddity. Yeah. That's That's horrible. why it's bullshit. <laughs> this is so stupid. This is going to the pile of shame. That made it like okay. And, and it turns out Yamada's a bit odd herself because she eats. Yeah. What? Okay. What does that tell you about Japanese culture and food? Yeah, that's yes. yeah. This is going to the giveaway pile, or sorry, this is going to the pile of shame, which if you follow me on Instagram, I do give away books from there for giveaways from time to time. Well, real quick, what did I just give away over there? I gave away uh, uh, solo leveling. Yeah. So I'm giving away quality stuff. It's not all garbage. I, I just didn't um, like that one. Yeah, Hog and I, I don't have many friends. Yeah. A, bl- a black and white misprint cover of Ancient Magus Bride. That was probably the best stuff in the thing, though. And uh, Judge Volumes 1, 2, and 4. I guess those were yeah. all pretty good. It's just stuff we yeah. Well, and then stuff that I got earlier. I got some extras. Asaki the Succubus, Volume 5. World's End Harem. Uh, Machi Maho. Yeah. Uh, Mint Chocolate, Volumes 1 and 2, which you didn't like, but lots of people love oh, that. Oh, yeah, people love it. So come over to Instagram. Follow us both. We do random giveaways. This will be a random giveaway item at some point. Because it's giveawayable look there are some things that i think let's just go to the next one there's things that i think are bullshit that people love sailor moon volume two we bought this for our sailor moon video Mm -hmm. definitely go check that out mommy and daughter love this bullshit no no sailor moon that's not going on the pile of shame no, it's not, but it's bullshit. That's that's what I'm saying. Just because I call it bullshit doesn't mean somebody else. Somebody else. Yes, Someone, that's true. I think even Revy Zero, I don't think she liked it, liked it, but she at least read the whole thing and was like, eh. Yeah. So I'm just saying, like people, the Japanese also have an expression. Was it Junin Tohiro? Ten people, ten colors. So oh, okay. Different strokes for different folks. Yeah, yeah, so say so I'm yeah, going to. We bought that for our video. Go check it out. All right. Then we have volume 15 of Horror Mia. Yep. Which I do, it's on my to-be-read recently, but hasn't been read yet. Immediately. Pile. Immediately, yes. yes. Again, we have volume 14 of Snow White with Red Hair. I know people have been asking me what I think, but I haven't moved it to the top because I just there are other things, but I also really want to read this. There's just something to say about that. Which, <laughs> volume, yeah, volume 9 of Love Me, Love Me Not, but I have read this one. Um... It kind of depends on what order in which I get them. So I kind of got this before I got those, so that gets read, read first. Um, I, there's not much to say about it. If you know the book, it's good. It's overall good. There's a little bit of arguing in it that kind of reminds me of Daddy Weave and myself. But, yeah. A little sus, bro. Sus, bro. Now we have... Um, the last little stack here. The last stack here. We have the thing that I was really waiting on. 
is uh, volume 10 of Kaguya-sama, Love is War. No, you gotta say it like, Kaguya-sama, Love is War. That, huh? Huh? That's how, that's how it's meant to be read. Oh, is it? That's what I think, yeah. Alright. Well, because it's Kaguya-sama, comma, so you have to pause, and it's like you're saying it to her. It's oh, not you're like, saying, it's you're not saying like, it's be like, Daddy Weeb. Loves war. Exactly. Okay, well, because gotcha. Kaguya-sama isn't a Japanese word. It's Kaguya it's her name. and they're honorific. It's her name. So yeah. it's not like love is war is a translation. No, no, no. That. Yeah, it's yeah. Kaguya-sama. Love is war. Love is war. Love is war. You got to say it romantically menacingly. <laughs> sus. You're sus. <laughs> we have... Um, so now we're skipping. We're skipping because I was like... I just need to start getting these so that I don't have the same problem that I had yes. with volume 10. So now we're skipping on to volume 14. Well, because we got 11 through 13 yeah. last month. Yeah. yeah. And 15, and 16, and 17, 18, and the newest, 19. I, I don't know how this story gets to 19 volumes to be honest with you i like and going. it and, and going like it's a good story it's funny you know i was sitting there reading some of the 10 and 11 and i was la- i was literally laughing out loud yes. as i was reading it yep. so it's funny it's good one of the one of the sh- one of the shonen titles that more women in america read than men but it's just i don't know how it gets to volume 19 like when are they just going to be like... Because they show Chica dancing in the anime and all the fanboys want more. I That's guess. what happens. Fangirls? Whatever. I know. This is garbage. 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 Not garbage. It's funny. Okay. It's funny. Anyway. Mm. So there we go. That's the haul. Should we do the, the preview? Even though yeah. we kind of yeah, did Yeah, we, so we kind of already did our preview. I, we should have had those at the end to do the preview at the well, end. Let's, let's do it. Let's just do it again to go through the, the motion. So... On three, two, one. Here's, Here's the, the preview. preview. We already said it. Yona, Yona the Dawn. Well, some people might have just went straight to the title. That's stamp, also true. Sass so. of the Dawn. Uh, we're actually going to record this tomorrow and have it out on Tuesday. For the people watching this in the future, and this is already out, that doesn't matter. But uh, They might have already watched it. Yeah, they might have watched it first and then yeah. watched this. So, Whatever, We're going to be discussing Yona the Dawn volumes uh, one and two. So come back on our regularly scheduled video drop every other Tuesday on your new release manga day. That's the reason why I picked it on Tuesdays because new manga is released on Tuesdays. So we release a just new video. Standard on American comics. That's on Wednesdays. Actually, oh. I think they changed it to Tuesdays. Actually, I don't know. Yeah. I think it's weird. I think DC drops Tuesdays and Marvel drops Wednesdays. I see. Uh, our comic book store guy Mike was telling us about that, or telling me about that the other day. So, boom! There you go. So with that, we may or may not record something a little extra here, but if we don't, we hope we'll see you in uh, six seasons in a movie. Okay, so here is some bonus content. Now bonus this is content. this is something we're trying here, mostly just because Mommy we wanted to talk about this thing it's super awesome. with the world. And hey, if you like this content, maybe we'll provide more sometime. Who knows? Um, so we're actually going to do something completely different here. We're going to be talking about the K-drama, Mr. Sunshine. It's freaking awesome! Yes. So, Mr. Sun- Sunshine is a K-drama that was a Netflix exclusive, or at least in the United a, States. It was but... Netflix exclusive in the United States in 2018. Yes. So but, we're well, behind on the curve here. Well... They they made it um, in Korea, South Korea, for them. Like, I think over there it's, like, Netflix funded. I don't know if it's Netflix exclusive there. Mm. Anyway, um, so Mr. Sunshine is a K-drama about um, two main characters, one named uh, Eugene Choi and Lady Aishin. Uh, what was her last name? Go Aishin. Go Aishin. Um the Korean name format is something I'm still getting used to. But this is set during uh, the late 19th century, very early 20th century. So it's a historical drama. And uh, kind of what's going on is it's kind of, it's the it's the autumn years of 
the Joseon Empire, which if you're not familiar, and hey, I wasn't. I had to look a lot of this we, stuff Yeah, up. we looked up a lot of history for this. Yeah, so Joseon uh, was like the name of Korea before it's modern before day Korea. Korea. And uh, I'm not sure why it's called Joseon, probably because of the emperor or something like that. But whatever, the country is called Joseon. It's called the Joseon Empire um, throughout the thing. And so it's a, um, what do they call it, like an ensemble cast of characters. We're following five main characters, but the super main characters are Go Shin and, and Eugene Choi. Now, what's interesting about Eugene is that he's born a slave in, in Joseon. Joseon. And when he's nine years old, the his parents' owner, for whatever reason, uh, kill his parents. And this all happens in the first episode. Yeah, the first are, episode you have... Which is super confusing, the, by the way. Yeah, the first episode, if you are lost in the first episode... That's normal. That's normal. You, yeah. I think you're meant to be lost in the first episode. Mm -hmm. So... The parents are, both the parents are slaves. They're owned by the master and they have mm -hmm. their child. And Kim, uh, the Kim family, I think, is the name of yeah, it. Yeah, that would make sense. Yeah, Kim. Yeah. Um, and the parents, for a reason, I don't know if I should reveal it. Don't but, reveal why, but they're killed. The, well, they're killed. Well, they're killed because they're trying to leave. Okay. Right? Yeah. As, as slaves, they're trying to escape their master. Mm -hmm. And in that process... Um, they get caught, mm -hmm. and uh, Eugene doesn't know what's going on, and so they because they're caught, it's like, well, I, I have to, you're my property, but I have to make an example. I'm just going to have to take a loss on this property, mm -hmm. and they decide to kill the mother and father. Well, mostly the father. Mostly the father, yeah. because he's the one that's truly caught, because the yeah. mother, there's another issue about the mother. But whatever, yeah. So the mother, recognizing that this is what's going to happen, and that her son is now in danger, because, again, I'm going to have to make an example of this property, he's going to be killed too. The mother... Um, Takes the daughter the, hostage. The, the daughter hostage, and basically is like, run, run away, yes. run away now, run as far as you can. Yeah. And he does. Yeah. And um, I'm going to skip ahead a little bit, but he runs into a uh, member of what's called the Righteous Army, which is like a group of underground rebels that have actually been around since the first invasion of Korea in the late 16th century. Um, so maybe think of a militia, but not anti-government, like a very pro-Joseon. It's pro-Joseon, but not necessarily pro who's in control of Joseon. Yeah. Um, anyway, he runs into him and... He eventually meets up with an American missionary, and the the rebel leader doesn't really know what to do with him. He's like, well, I can't keep you and raise you, even though I understand you're a runaway slave, um, but why don't you just go off to America? Yeah, that's far away. No yeah. one's going to get you. So he does, and so this is what's interesting about his name, Eugene. So, like, his birth name from Joseon is Eugene, like Y-U-J-I-N. And when he gets to America, the the pastor is or the missionary is like, "Well, we got to give you an English name so now." They, yeah. So they just named him Eugene, as in E U G E N E. Yeah. Right. And he likes that name because apparently it means like noble. So you kind of get like a poetic, like the slave becoming a noble. Yeah. Um, so this is kind of mostly how this starts, and he's like the main character, and then. Um, Lady Goe Sheen, her family were um, uh, Righteous Army members. Yeah, her parents. Yeah, her parents. Yeah, her parents. Yeah. Um, and then I can't say too much about that without being uh, spoilery. But and her parents were both killed because of that. Yes. Um, and it's all about her being trained to be in this society to both be a underground righteous army member and a noble and a noble which is like really like that contrast is it's super so good. good so good yeah and the other main players i'll briefly mention is you have i'm sorry if i butcher these but there's uh kim hui sung who's the grandson of the guy that killed eugene's uh parents, parents yeah um and he's a super good character because you hate his guts early on 
and then he just slowly changes into this awesome character. Yeah, definitely. Um, and then you have like a Yakuza element to it, which is Which is weird. weird. He's a Korean Yakuza. Yeah. Um, his name is uh, Gudong Mei. And um, he's weird because he's the son of a butcher, which I didn't know this, but apparently in Joseon at the time, like butchers were super looked at. Lower, than, lower than slaves. Yeah. Um, and so he flees the country and lives in Japan for quite a while. And he joins this Yakuza outfit called the Muzen Society, which has to be a bad translation because there's no SI in Japanese. So it's maybe Mushin or Mujin. So I don't know, whatever. But in, they translate it as Muzen Society. Um, M-U-S-I-N. And he's like the Korean, uh, branch of the syndicate and the reason why this is important is because historically at this time japan is a rising power on the world stage um, america is trying to establish a foothold in the pacific to trade with china and korea is kind of like the speed bump on everyone's mm -hmm. map japan wants to colonize it because they want to run a train up to russia they're essentially sending criminal elements into joseon to kind of slowly take over well okay but their main thing is they want this railroad yeah from the from the shores of korea all the way into russia because japan even at this time is gearing up for a war with russia but they're using the musen society or yes musen society well yes i understand that they're protecting their interests there yeah but i'm telling you as a country japan wants to control korea to fight russia yes but what i'm okay. saying is that japan as a country it's kind of like when um England um, deputized pirates to, oh, it's not illegal for you to oh, be sure. a pirate against the Spanish. The Japanese were basically saying, your activity in Joseon is not considered illegal because you're doing it for... Well, I'm not sure it's illegal. Well, whatever. I don't want to get into the... I don't know that that's specifics, but that's kind of how I saw it. They're like, doing... It, they're it's doing, approved by the Japanese tangentially. I think... It's clandestine operations for the Japanese government, yeah. I think is the best way to put I it. I suppose. But, like, the Gudong Mei is, like, the leader of this. And um, he's, like, everyone's in love with Lady Aishin. Like, that's kind of what drives a lot of this. Because it is a romance story. It is story a romance story. At the end of the day. Now, if I'm endorsing a romance story, you know you gotta watch it. <laughs> yeah. it's gonna be, it is so good. Because it's got the romance, it's got killing. It's got action. Tons like, action that you would not think. Like... I I started watching this. Dad was not... He just no, happened no, to be in this... You were kind of interested. Yeah. But I started watching this, and I expected it to be, you know, maybe a little bit of action, but well, we... mostly just, like, love and drama in the past and blah, blah, blah. But there's, like, crazy, like, actual action mm. stunts. That one horse stunt was insane. Yeah. Um, you, you're just shocked by, like, how it can go from being this dramatic romance to being this high action i thought it was going to be an action because i swear in the preview they focus on showing the two masked figures that they I do focus say. on that in the preview yeah and actually i thought it was one masked figure oh. or whatever, <laughs> which is actually a very minor I think, portion i think that's they, they kind of intended that to like not yeah. be sure what was going on yeah and i thought it was going to be kind of like there's this masked assassin going around being a superhero. I did kind of think that was what it was going to be. And it's kind of sort of like that, kinda, but not really. Not really. Yeah. But you missed your other, your last lead. Uh, what I got? Gudong Mei, uh, Kim Hui Sung. The hotel owner. I don't really consider her a Then lead. who's your other? No, I think that's it. There's five of them. Lady Aishin, Eugene Choi, Kim uh, Hui Sung, Gudong Mei. Like maybe there's not one. It's you. It was the hotel. Owner. Okay, fine. Uh, her name is. Her name is. Uh, that she goes by in the show is uh, Hina Kudo, and she's Japanese Kore name. Yeah, she's Korean, and the whole thing is her dad, who's like a Japanese sympathizer. He's like the antagonist of the show. Married her off to a Japanese man for money. For money. Because this guy is the most ambitious, money, power hungry, evil, scumbag. evil dude. Yeah, and will sell out his country. And apparently his own daughter for money. Yeah. And it's implied that the husband was extremely abusive. Yes. And he dies a mysterious death. Mm -hmm. But he was rich. And so she inherited all of his money. And she bought this hotel, hotel. called. Which. Worst hotel name ever. Worst hotel name ever. The Glory Hotel. 
They might as well just named it the Glory Hole I, and been done so with bad. it. It's so bad. The whole time we were watching that. But a lot of what happens in the series revolves around what's happening at this hotel. hotel. That's true. And so her name, they call her Hina Kudo, but I forget what her real name, her I real Korean remember. name is. But like, um, yeah, it's all about like, who does she side with? Because half the time you think she's siding with the Japanese and sometimes you think she's siding with Joe Sai. Yeah, she's your very yeah. ambiguous character. Oh, you know what I should talk about who mm. deserves one is Major Kyle. <laughs> Kyle Moore. I think you need to explain it. Okay, if we're, if we're explaining everything. Well, not everything. but Well, the thing that you need to know is when Eugene is in the United States, oh, this is he so has... Good. He runs into like some vicious Actually, me, racism. Wait, hold on. Like, yeah, let me let me tell it. Oh, sorry, no, I, I no, 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 no. I mansplained to well, him. Well, he's a young child. Yes. He's Asian. Yeah. Um, and he in a, run, in a country full of honkies. Yeah, and he runs into a lot of racism, mm. telling him to go back to China, which yeah, is like to China. To China. <laughs> um, oh God, back to China. Um, and one time as he is. It sounds really like being getting getting beat up by the yeah. other little boys and getting his area. money stolen and getting his money stolen and whatever. Some U.S. Army soldiers, no Marine Corps. Sorry, Marine Corps. They march by, and I think this is because it's like after the Civil War. Yes, and so they're marching the circa by circa eighteen seventy five ish. Mm, yeah, or, or no, it's circa eighteen ninety. But what he sees yeah. and what amazes him is he notices that there's a black man. Yeah, there's like one black one man. one black soldier yeah. in the military. In this in this march going down the street. Now you probably had a right one black soldier. In it was military. one. It was one that I <laughs> in the entire, the entire military. military. <laughs> Anyways, he sees this black man and he's amazed. He's like, "That's it," because he saw that this black man was. Well, least, he's he's not getting beat up. He's not getting beat up. He's seeing that he's at least getting some well, he's respect treated, he's treated, for wearing the uniform. Yeah. Now, don't get me wrong. America is still wildly racist at this time. But what, what Eugene is seeing in this moment is that there's a black man with no cuts or bruises on his face. He's marching with the soldiers. He's got a gun. And for, on the, the outside. The people that are with him, at least, are respecting, respecting him. him. Right. He, yeah, he's not getting beat up and that. And his he's money like, taken. that's it. He's like, that's it. I'm going to drop that's that, so I'm going to get respect. he views mm -hmm. the United States as his home. He doesn't view yes. Joseon as his home. His home abandoned him. He was a slave in his home. Mm -hmm. He is not a slave in the United States. So he, he throughout the whole of the series, he declares that the United States is his home. home. Yeah. What's interesting is take it to Koreans to tell a good American story, uh, American dream story. It is an American yeah. dream story. <laughs> but um, oh, what was I going to say? So he joins the U.S. Marine Corps. And he's fight. He's fighting in the Spanish American. Okay, I'm gonna pause you just right. And for anybody who's like, "Wow, you guys are really going on." This is all in the first episode. episode yeah, this, <laughs> this is all, is all episode the first one. episode. Which is confusing. So you're actually better off hearing it from us. It might help to watch, to listen yes. to this and then watch it. <laughs> um, he meet, during the Spanish American War. He saves the life of his commanding officer. Named Kyle Moore, who's like... Kyle is so freaking hilarious. He's a major, and Eugene ends up being a captain. So they're only like one or two ranks apart. I forget the rank. They're like best life. buddies. Yeah. And like... <laughs> first of all, it's hilarious, because when I first saw it, I was like, is this a Korean guy doing whiteface? Like, the lighting that they have on uh, Major Moore, <laughs> it makes him look like a Korean dude doing whiteface. It's and I looked it up. I looked it up. The actor is actually half Korean, half white, born in America, but now has moved to South Korea and works in Korean cinema. Um, most episodes, he looks white. Yes. But this first episode or two. He did have two, this weird, like, wait. It, it, is it, was just a very, it? it was very, yeah. like, confused. And here's the other thing that's very interesting about this series. Wait, wait, wait can I just. Go ahead. When we first see them um, together on screen, I think this is the opening scene. They're being ordered to go to Joseon by Theodore Roosevelt, which is awesome. That was amazing. And because it's almost like a fan service, like presidential fan service, uh, Teddy Roosevelt like spins this globe. He's like, oh, guys, you're going to go to Joseon and protect American interest. Yeah. And then he goes, and remember, gentlemen, we'll walk softly and carry a big stick. Like the one thing that Teddy Roosevelt. softly, but yeah. Whatever. But anyways... To, you have to get his tagline. To, 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 yeah. to say something about that, the thing that makes this series particularly interesting is that they didn't, like, 
we're not going to make Teddy Roosevelt speak Korean. He right. spoke English. Yeah. And when and he was a white dude. They, he, they probably went to one of the military bases yeah. and got the white dude in Korea. Some of the acting on the side characters is very stiff. Yeah. Um, but if, if they were uh, U.S., British, they're speaking English. Eugene speaks English. Mm-hmm. If you're doing a Japanese scene, which clearly we're going to have oh, yeah. subtitles on the Japanese scenes, but they're speaking Japanese. Japanese. So it's very interesting that they, they, they're like, no, we're just going to have everybody speak the language that they speak that is appropriate for the scene that it's in. And yes, sometimes the accents are very thick. But it's, I appreciated that. Well, and sometimes, and you might not notice this, especially if you don't speak any Korean or Japanese, even the Koreans will flip-flop between characters speaking Japanese Depending and on Korean. who they're speaking to yes. and what they're talking about. Yes. Like, there was one time where they're on the, the train, and for a second I was like, the two characters were speaking to each other, and I was like, wait, they can't just speak in front of me. Yes, they can, because they were speaking Korean, and they were against the Japanese. The Japanese don't know what they're saying, yeah. so they could just speak in Korean. Um, and also, like, Gudong Mei half the time speaks Japanese because he was raised in Japan for all those years. And, mm. like, most of the guys in the Muzen society speak Japanese, even though most of them are Korean yeah. uh, born. But um, Eugene Choi, the actor that plays him, actually played in Terminator Genesis, which I thought was interesting. He played the T-1000. He was also in um, Magnific- the new Magnificent Seven. He mm-hmm. was uh, Billy. I the one was- with uh, Denzel Washington? Yes. Yeah. So, a pretty, pretty good cast. Pretty solid acting. The story was absolutely amazing. There's tons of intrigue. So good. And you never yeah. know what's going to happen. Like, it, it, there's there's some predictable parts to it, and in those predictable parts, you're still like, I need to see this play mm-hmm. out. Mm-hmm. But there's so many parts that are just unpredictable that you don't know what's going to happen next. Mm-hmm. It, uh, and you think, all that stuff we just told you in the about the first, that was all the first episode. More or less, yeah. And it's like, well, what else can you tell about this story? A whole freaking lot. I mean, they follow these characters around for multiple decades. Yeah. I mean, not the bulk of the story takes place over in the span about of like, a year. Well, it's six year or seven a, years, but there's a time skip yeah. in between. Um, but yeah, you follow these characters for a while and see so much of their lives, so much of like Joseon class structure. A lot of like, oh, of this person stuff. that's suddenly showing up, we're going to connect them back to the episode that you watched them in like mm-hmm. three, three episodes ago. And you're like, I didn't know that that was going to be a big deal. And here yeah. it is. And I will say this. You can maybe count this as a spoiler, but it's a spoiler in that, oh, spoiler, the Titanic sinks at the end of the movie. The Righteous Army doesn't win this. Yeah. Like, historically, like, Japan takes over, and they're in charge. They colonize for at least a while. For, like, a good 40 years, and it doesn't end until the end of World War II, right? So, like, you know this is all doomed. But, like, you still have these sparks of hope that it could be a religion of history. You're like, are these people going to survive? Actually, the ending is, who's going to survive? Like, you're like, who's the person that's going to make it out of this? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to, to, it's not all downers. Like, this this is not all downers. One moment, you could be having a dramatic, intense scene. And then the next moment, the two characters are talking together and they crack a joke with each other. And it mm. feels so natural. Yeah. You're like, 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 for example, uh, I think there's an incident where Eugene discharges his firearm and it's like a big dramatic moment that he has to account for all of his spent shells. And so he goes up to Major Moore and he's like emptying his gun. Because he had to, like, go buy black market bullets to, like... To say, these are the reasons why I have the... the yeah. Stuff. And so, like, he buys one too many bullets or something like that. And then uh, it's, like, this serious thing. And then uh, Major Moore's like, Eugene, go do some laps. And then you see... <laughs> He's got to gear up and go do laps. <laughs> and it doesn't look like, you know, your full metal jacket. He's in, like, workout gear. No, he's in that Civil War era... Full suit, like three backpacks on, running Carrying around. Carrying his rifle, yeah, running around the building. Sweat pouring down his face. It's pretty good. And there's lots of other, like... A lot of the side characters carry a lot of the comedy, too. Yeah. But they're not... That's not their only part. They do have yeah. serious drama. They are import, very important to the core of the story. Yeah. The most famous one would be the... Uh, there's two slave catchers, or they used to be slave catchers. They're pawnbrokers now, but like <laughs> once once slavery became illegal, they became pawnbrokers. Pawn they run a shop. What was it called? Anything, anything you, you want. want. <laughs> and they literally do anything. Anything, you anything want. you want. If you 
They're always like, how much? Yeah, how much? Or they'll be like, or another example of the comedy, they'll be like, I, I need bullets. And he's like, ooh, bullets are really hard. You know, we have to get them from yeah, Russian sh- smugglers. So he's like, you can't get them? No, they're just going to cost a lot. Bring <laughs> <laughs> some good guy. But anyway, Mr. Sunshine, Netflix. It's so good. We keep talking about it. Watch it. Um, it was so good that Mommy Weeb had to put it in a haul video to let people know. It's so good. I even want to rewatch it. So, there you go. If you want to hear more of our thoughts on K-dramas, put it in the comments below. Hopefully you like that. And, you know, maybe we'll have more K-dramas during our six seasons in a movie.